Well, my reaction is uh, shock first and then disappointment. Obviously, we feel the uh, evidence warranted a conviction on uh, the defendants, and uh, the jury disagreed with us, and we must uh, abide by their decision. Do you think that holding the trial here in Simi Valley makes a difference in the verdict? I don't think we want to talk about uh, anything along those lines. The jury listened to the evidence. They listened very patiently for six weeks. Uh, they appear to have gone over the evidence, and we have no complaints about uh, the hearing we received. Well, I'm not going to say it's, I don't uh, want to uh, imply that this is a miscarriage of justice. Uh, this is the way our system works. Um, you present the evidence to a uh, impartial trier of fact, and that trier of fact comes to a verdict. And sometimes you disagree with the verdict, but that's the way the system works. What about the decision not to call Rodney King to the witness stand? Do you have second thoughts now about that? No, we don't have any second thoughts on that. I don't know to what extent, if any, it played in the jury's decision, but we feel it was a proper decision uh, that was made. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more thing, please. Uh, yeah. I, I wasn't clear on uh, the exchange in court. Uh, the May 15th hearing, does that mean that you do intend to retry uh, Lawrence Powell on count two, or do you still have yet to make a final decision? Well, a final decision hasn't been made on that, but it will be made by May 15th. Uh, we'll be available for other interviews. Uh, this isn't the only time we'll talk. We're, we're uh, going to be open. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I'm outraged. Uh, I'm shocked. But you know that's that's the uh, that's the system. Uh, I talked to my client. Uh, he can't believe it. He's furious. Uh, his his feeling is it didn't happen here. Why was this case tried here? Uh, I, I don't believe for a minute that these jurors had any appreciation uh, of of uh, of what happened to Rodney King. And I, I don't represent the defendants, and I'm sure they're very happy with their their result. But uh, my client and and and, and I are, are just outraged. It's just it's it's not fair. It's not right. And that's what the federal court's all about. The federal court, in fact, is a forum for these type of cases because state courts have these shortcomings. I talked to my client uh, more, not more than about five minutes ago, and and he he can't believe it. He said, but the way he looks at it. And, his feeling is that it's probably because it was tried here. The crime didn't occur here. They didn't beat him in Simi Valley. And why are these people sitting in judgment of his case? You said all along that you were happy with the prosecution's case. Excuse me. What's your feeling now? Yeah. I, I was. I was. My feeling was that I was happy with the effort they were putting into it. Uh, you know, it's not for me to second guess them. You know, I, I think there are a lot of witnesses I've said all along that they could have called. They chose not to. There's independent witnesses. There's. What do you think went wrong? It may be that 12, you know, 12 white jurors aren't going to convict four white cops for beating a black man, and maybe that's as basic as it is. Well, do you think the I don't know. Did the district attorney's office make a mistake then in not making more of an issue of the trial being moved to Simi Valley? I was present in Weisberg's court when they argued that motion. I was present when Weisberg announced his decision to have it transferred and heard here in this courthouse. And I would say that, that Mr. White and, and Yokelson uh, argued uh, extremely uh, uh, articulately and vehemently for the matter to be transferred to Alameda County. And I certainly think the result there would have been more appropriate and more just. I don't think that those jurors would have let these officers off. You know, second guessing it, I don't, I, you know, wouldn't that have, would that have made a difference? These jurors weren't inclined to, to, to find these officers guilty based on what they saw in that videotape. I know my client would have made a hell of a good witness. He wanted to testify. They chose not to use him. He will testify in his civil rights case. And the next jury that hears this case, and it may even be another jury that hears the criminal matter, because the DA apparently is going to try or retry Mr. Powell. Well, was it a mistake then for, for them not to have called him? Well, I, I, you know, I, I can't speak to that, because I don't know what exactly was the motivating force for these jurors to, to overlook the obvious violence depicted on that videotape. You know, certainly King would have spoken to the violence, so he, he, would have, he would have given substance to it, he would have let his jurors know what as a human being it felt like to be laying on the ground and being kicked and stomped and, 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 and booted like that by, the, by these, these four characters. 
And that's something these, these jurors missed. Maybe that tape didn't come with a soundtrack that they could, that they could listen to and, and listen up to and understand. I've been living with this case and, this, and Rodney King for, for over a year, and I can tell you and, and, and all of you out there that, that this man, when he finally speaks in front of a jury, is going gonna, is gonna to turn some heads because what happened to him should never have happened to anybody. And as long as this situation is allowed to exist, it will happen again and again and again. And it's got to stop. It's got to stop. This trial is not the end of this. Message does this send out? It sends a bad message. It says it's okay to go ahead and beat somebody when they're down and kick the crap out of them, and it's okay because if, it, if it's not videotaped, don't worry about it. Another brother officer won't turn you in, and if a brother officer does turn you in, don't worry. We'll get white jurors or whoever it takes, and we'll, you'll walk. And you're protected by the system. You're backed up by the system. But I'm not happy with this result. I have a client. My client is, is outraged. I'm shocked that this could happen, and the fact that it would happen here or happen anywhere is disgusting. And I think that we have to send a message to the world that we know how to take care of, uh, of our citizens. And in a sense, this sends a message out to the world that not only are we not prepared to admit that what happened here was wrong, but we're prepared to go ahead and, and, and ratify it and say, it's fine, they're not guilty, it's fine, everybody go home. Instead, there's talk of Chief Gay spending a million dollars to put extra officers on the street so that, that the, the, the minority community can be controlled if they're hot after this verdict. I think it's, it's, it's a good time, folks. If you got a plane ticket, cash it in and get the heck out of Dodge. This is going to be a bad place to live. Mr. King, you speak out about this now, please? I think Mr. King is, is, is right now in a sense of shock. He's in a state of shock. He, he, yes, I've talked to him. I talked to him within the last 15 minutes. He, he's out. He's, he's speechless. He's almost speechless. You know, he's with some friends. I think when he has a chance to digest what's happened and kind of frame some comments that he would probably figure appropriate, I think that, you know, we're, we're definitely going to uh, have an opportunity for him to, to make some comments and his reaction. I mean, even on the one count, it was four guilty, eight not guilty, even on the count on which the jury did not decide. Well, Dave, I, th I think that history is going to look back at this case and, and, and take note of the fact that there were very, very hot emotions running all through the case. It's, it's been uh, quite unusual and significant and unique that, uh, that a case involving uh, uh, all of these different components w would all, you know, in a sense, come together now at this time. But regardless of what these jurors are thinking when they went into that room and deliberated, I, I agree with you that it, it would seem that they, that they chose to ignore they chose to ignore and disregard the, the most fundamental issue, and that was the issue of, of brutal, excessive, felonious fault, felonious criminal liability, assault on this, on this man. And, and there's nothing that Rodney King did to deserve what they did to him. And now they walk out there and, and they're heroes. Mr. Well, Lerner, what was missing? we'll have our day. We'll have our day. What was missing from the prosecution's case? Well, I have to be in a, in a better position to comment on that when I have a, a sense from these jurors about what they thought was or was not missing. Uh, it's our intention to have our, our team essentially uh, uh, debrief the jurors, those that are willing to, to discuss the matter with us, and find out what it was that they you know, were impressed with one way or the other. And have you talked to your client? Yes. Yes. I, I talked to him. Yes, for now. I've, I've talked to him and that morning about 15 minutes ago. And he, he's shocked speechless. He can't believe it. And, and, but his, his, one of his comments was, you know, well, it didn't happen up in Simi Valley. You know, why the, why the, why the heck was it ever tried there? You know, and, and I, I, I couldn't even answer him. I, I, all I could say was, I just don't know. I just don't know. This will have a major impact on your civil case. Well, we're going to go into federal court. We're going to take these four defendants in, and we're going to put on a much different case. We're going to put on a much more comprehensive, explanative case. And we're going to let the jurors in that case, the civil rights case, have a good sense and feel of what it's like to be on the ground when, when you're being stomped and, and clubbed and have a good sense of what it's like to get into your car and step out on, you know, into a, a playing field of battle like Rodney King did. And that's something that this jury may not have sensed or seen. And I don't know why, that, that, why the case failed. Do you think the young gentleman would have been different in, in most communities? Well, I believe it would have been different in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I, it may be that the jurors and, and the way they were motivated to thinking, uh, their mindset, 
I, I don't know. I can't speak to the, that they may have been predisposed to finding the officers guilty. But I think that this has been long regarded as a bedroom community for a law enforcement of our city, Los Angeles. And to the extent that these folks, you know, take off their blue uniforms and come out here and go to the 7-Eleven, I don't know. They, they evidently enjoyed a community support and, and, and a feeling of support that uh, they may not have enjoyed in Los Angeles, where I think people are, are fed up and sick and tired of what they saw in that tape. The only way I'll know that is after the jurors are, are polled, that is to say debrief, really. And if, they, if, if, if the jurors say, for example, well, they would have convicted the officers if Rodney King had testified, then it'll be easier to answer that question. I don't know. If I had to put the case on, I had to call King. King wanted to testify. He will testify in his civil rights case because it's a violation of Rodney King's civil rights that will be the issue in the next case. So that's, that's the best I can offer him. Are you bitter? Are you angry? Yeah, very angry. And he's and he's been concerned about this. Okay. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is going to be somewhat of a monitored uh, interview room or interview. Uh, Mr. Stone has agreed to to an interview. Mr. Powell, Mr. De Pasquale, I will field the questions, or I will I will recognize the questionnaire, and then you can ask your question, and we'll go from there. Mr. Stone. Good afternoon. I'd like to begin with a statement on behalf of Officer Powell and all the defendants, if I may, and it is in the form of a thank you to all the members of the Los Angeles Police Protective League and the Board of Directors for their continuing support throughout this entire case. I uh, thank you also to our court reporter, Chris, for uh, a stellar job during the entire course of this trial and getting the uh, dailies out, and of course, to the jury. Thank you. Paul, your reaction to what has happened today? Very happy. <laughs> Were you surprised? Well, I mean, it's hard to be surprised when you felt that way the whole way. You're just hoping for the right decision. And uh, because, you know, I know I'm innocent, and that was the verdict. What is it that you would want to tell Rodney King at this point, if anything? Nothing. No, no, no. What are your feelings towards Mr. King? No. I'm not even worried about any feelings no, towards don't him. don't answer that. We're not going to, ladies and gentlemen. We're not with the pending uh, decision of the district attorney's office. I'm sure you can understand. We're not going to discuss anything that uh, might uh, impact in any way that that decision. I'm perfectly happy to let him discuss his uh, present feelings with respect to what happened today. Excuse me, with respect to what happened today, but um, not um, not anything that might uh, be involved in any consideration of a refiling. I feel as though it's been a you realize that this case has received obviously massive publicity. There are many people with, with intense feelings about this verdict today. What, what would you say to the people who you were at one time uh, paid to protect and to serve? What would you say to them right now? These people who are feeling very angry. Some of them say they, they are you know, ready to t take out their frustration and unrest. Well, I don't know what I'd say to him. You know, I know all the facts have come out in this case, and I hope their decision was based on that and not emotions. This isn't something that you should base an emotional reaction to. It's not what it was at all. Officer Powell, can we have more of your emotional reaction in regards to what was going through your mind when you heard not guilty of it? Just, well, a lot of it had to go over. My heartbeat was pounding <laughs> in anticipation, but uh, I'm very happy. 
very happy. I wish he was not guilty on all the counts, but uh, would you share with us what was questions. happening after the courtroom was cleared? You were there with the jurors. What happened in that interchange? Um, excuse me, sir. Um, the jurors did not come down to the courtroom. Uh, the jurors had a prepared statement uh, read by the information officer of the Los Angeles Superior Court. We didn't have the opportunity in the courtroom after the verdicts to see the jurors or to speak with them. And the statement that they gave was to the effect that they were not, um, they were hopeful that there wouldn't be any contact by either uh, participants in the case or members of the media. Larry, do you feel as though there's just been a personal vendetta, maybe perhaps on the part of the district attorney's office, particularly that they may be or want to retry you again? I couldn't even begin to think that that would only be in the mind of the DA, and I'm not going to try and get in his mind. Mr. Oh, Hello, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, we had a question back here. Mr. you've been vindicated not only in a legal sense, but vindicated, say, in the eyes of the people in the community, the people who saw that videotape on the news uh, last March 13th, vindicated in a, in, a, in a larger sense? I think each person had to make up his own decision based on what he saw. I mean, I saw a lot of people felt vindicated just watching the trial on TV, you know, and a lot of people already had reached their decision. So I don't think people's individual decisions were based on what the jury was going to say. If a person thought I was innocent from the beginning, regardless of what the jury thought, he would still think I was going to be innocent. If you had that night more than a year ago to live over, would you do anything different? I, uh, you have an answer for that. Do I have? I don't no, think I can answer that. That'd be a hard one to answer, really would. What are your feelings about question here, question here. Mr. Stone, what did you do that worked? Um, one of the things that I thought was very important in this case in the beginning was to try to put the jurors in the shoes of the police officers at the scene, all of them. And I think we were able to do that based on the verdicts and the, um, the way that the evidence uh, rolled out. I think that we were able to, to do what we set out to do, which was tr get the jurors to look at this case, not through the eye of a camera, not through the eye of an amateur video, but through the eyes of the police officers who were uh, confronting this situation on March 3rd, 1991. Selecting the, a, a neutral and impartial jury was one of the most important aspects of the case. That's why it took uh, almost half the length of the trial to do that. And again, uh, I'd like to say that uh, what we said in the very beginning, that, that race had absolutely nothing to do with the selection of the jury. It, it was based on the answers that they gave, both in writing in the juror questionnaire and in response to oral questions posed by the court. Larry, go ahead. What are your feelings, Officer Powell, towards Officer Bacino? I congratulated nope. him after this. I've got no animosity. Is your life still in limbo? Because of the one trial, one mistrial, Mr. Sure, absolutely. I won't know until like that's resolved. Trial County. How important was that? The ability to select a fair and impartial jury in this case was, of course, one of the most important aspects uh, that we faced in the defense. Moving the case out of Los Angeles County was essential to achieving that result. Uh, I'd like to think that uh, this same trial would have resulted in the same. Uh, Verdicts, with regardless of where it was tried, outside of Los Angeles County. No comment. There are a lot of people who would say race was indeed a big issue in this case. Your response to them? A lot of people have said that for a long time, sir, that, that race uh, was a part of this case. It was not a part of this case. It wasn't a part of the prosecution's case. It wasn't a part of the defense case. And it wasn't part of the jury's selection. And it wasn't part of the jury's decision. Mr. Pally, yesterday you indicated that your career in law enforcement is over. Does that still stand in light of this verdict? I'm sure it does. <laughs> what are the plans? I don't know. I gotta wait till everything's finally resolved, which it isn't at this point. Is there any chance that you might get uh, any of your back pay or any of the other things back with the police investigation? The the um, 
Employment status of Officer Powell is as it was before the trial, and that is he is relieved from duty without pay and benefits pending a decision by the Los Angeles Police Department Board of Rights, which may or may not proceed uh, in the very near future. Yeah, Mr. Stone, you were criticized at one point in the trial for perhaps making a mistake that allowed the computer-generated messages to get in uh, to be a subject of the testimony. What impact do you think that have, and, and what happened there? Well, I think it's been called a gaffe. Um, in any event, um, it, I don't believe it played a part uh, in the uh, evidence uh, because it was a non-issue in the case. It was not connected to the case in any way. Um, the ruling at the sidebar seemed to indicate that, the, in the judge's opinion, uh, that evidence was fair game regardless of uh, the so-called opening the door. But aside from that, it's an academic discussion because it was not an issue in the case. Sir. Larry Wally, would you stay? Would you stay? He's coming back. What is it, Larry, what's the status of any federal civil rights investigations in this matter? I don't know. Bye. I don't know. I don't know.